Markets gained for third week straight. NASDAQ technology sector, communication services sectors hit either 52 week highs or for technology an actual all time record high. Junk debt is also at 52 week highs. And all of the above mean only one thing. Stocks are in a bull market. They are bullish. We will also look at gold, which has stalled despite a weaker dollar. We will see if uh, precious metals are in the process of reversing. We will also look at silver, which is at resistance. And we will finish up with oil, which broke major support. All this and more in today's edition of MasterCharsTrading.com Market Recap for Friday, November 17, 2023. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, share this video. If you have any questions, ask in the comments or just make a comment. All of the comments are greatly appreciated and this is exactly what keeps this channel going. So once again, thank you for them. If you are a subscriber, stay tuned. We will be covering separately a whole bunch of various securities such as Bitcoin and natural gas, which is, will be covered in this uh, week's members only edition. Natural gas has a particularly interesting pattern that could be of interest to natural gas traders. We will also cover a bunch of various ETFs, large cap stocks, as well as various small cap uh, and uh, speculative securities uh, such as Airbnb, Archer and, and Archer Aviation, um, Shopify, and Roku, to name a few. As always, throughout the presentation, I'll be using my proprietary MasterCharsTrading.com price action indicators, which you can see on this chart. There is green, blue, red, and yellow lines. This lines is what I use basically for trading anything under the sun. On this chart of S&P 500, this is the actual index, uh, notice we have um, at least three gaps that I can see, possibly four, there's a little tiny one between October 31st, November 1st, and they're all gap up. So gap up implies strong buying pressure. There's only one thing that can uh, it can only apply, uh, imply. Uh, people want to own a stock, in this case, uh, stock index, S&P 500, uh, people, robots, funds, uh, whoever, the market participants, uh, they want to own stocks. They do not want to sell stocks. They do not want to sell them short. Uh, they want to cover their short and they want to own them. So notice uh, this uh, high uh, right there from July 27th, that is a 52-week high. So anytime a security hits a 52-week high, it is unquestionably in an uptrend. There is no question about it. You don't have to ask a what if questions or anything of that nature. Um, an uptrend, uh, a 52-week high implies an uptrend. What happens afterwards is a different story. But for now, we're definitely in an uptrend. How do I know? So I use my indicator lines and notice that that's the only thing that I really needed is uh, notice that before here, like in 2022, in late 2022, we were trading below the yellow and red lines. Well, the important thing is we have closed below the yellow line right here where I'm hovering in April of 2022. And until we have closed above the blue support resistance line, which occurred here on April 13th, or if you add the dividends in, it actually occurred a little bit earlier right there. See, this is S&P 500 ETF SPY with dividends. It actually began uh, in, in February of this year. So we can say that the stock market uh, started um, in back into uh, uptrend, into bull market started in February of this year exactly on February 2nd of this year, because this is exactly what happened. So this is the utility of my indicator lines is that number one, you can definitely define an uptrend. So an uptrend for us for stocks, this is a stock is when the, it closes above the blue line and have not yet closed below the yellow line. Okay. With me, if you didn't get that, ask me a question, ask, make a comment. So as of right now, we're exactly in that situation. We have dropped below the blue line, but we have not closed below the yellow line. 
that means that we have not entered the bear market and in fact i was waiting for this opportunity exactly i was waiting for stocks to drop below the blue line because at that point i know they are quote oversold end quote so here back in october i'm sorry back in july of this year stocks were quote unquote overbought they were in an uptrend but they they really moved pretty strongly especially from this low in march i mean this is a pretty big move so they were overbought and they needed to kind of correct to consolidate the gains this is exactly what what happened we have corrected from july into late october and then rallied and we rallied in a very logical place we closed below the blue line and then we closed above it and this is our trigger we just don't think we just buy okay so actually this is what i did i, I removed my brain and i bought okay so far i was correct i'm up about uh, close to seven percent i think that when or if we take out the high from the july we will see a pretty strong melt up so the reason for that is because pretty much everybody including your grandma if they're selling short after this you know let's say they oh wow we're gonna go down we're gonna collapse and they sell short like in october here they got this little tiny move but where do they put the stop so usually people put their stop above previous recent high so this is a previous recent high which is just totally obvious i mean you you, you can't get any more obvious than that um I'm going to show you, um, I mean, this is, this is a very obvious recent high in, you know, 50, this is an obvious 52 week high. Okay. So people put their stops above the 52 week high. That's a short stop. Okay. So when, or if we take out the short stops, what happens? So a short stop implies, um, you need to cover your, uh, short position, which means you need to buy okay so all of those people who put their short stops above this position above this july highs will need to buy in an open market and this will fuel the rally higher so when they close their short there's going to be probably a pop higher significant pop higher i know above 52 highs into new 52 highs and then once that happens we're actually not that far off from record highs okay so record highs are there I'm going to put in the horizontal line there. That's the record high. Okay. So we're not that far off, you see. So when, when or if we get to those uh, record highs and we're like, we're 6% away from record highs. Okay. That's another, just a major uh, short stop. So let's look at it on the weekly chart. Okay. So there's the weekly chart. I'm just going to turn off my indicators for a little while. So there's the all time high back in January of 2022, right before the Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine. If you guys remember that, I was very upset. Uh, many people were also very upset. I thought the world will probably end uh, with a nuclear blast, uh, blasts, many blasts. However, so far uh, cooler heads have prevailed, if you call that cooler heads. Now, for whatever reason um right this instant we're seeing an interest for people to own the stocks and this is despite two wars major wars going on in the world and just a general sense of instability and the breakdown of order uh, you know worldwide why do people want to own stock stocks i I'm not sure. I cannot answer that question. But if you have an idea of why do you think that is that is happening, please make a comment. But for for our purposes, the important thing is where do people put their short stops? So number one, we put our short stops above the 52-week highs here, and we're about to take them out. We're just so close. But for really long-term traders who think I don't know, I have a friend. He's a a very uh, negative uh, view of uh, future and so if his time horizon is like i don't know three years out or five years out maybe he bought puts that are in like 2025 or 2026 even 
So where did he put his stop? He put his stop above the previous record highs. Okay. So he would. So people would do that. They would put their short stops above previous record highs, and then when or if we get there, once again they have to sell. And then when they sell, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, they have to cover their stops, right? Cover their shorts. They have to buy on an open market. Okay, so that means there's going to be more desire for owning more stocks. All right. So that that's why I'm saying is that, you know, we we could easily see a significant move higher for stocks into 2025, into into end of 2025. My projection is. Uh, you know, potential move towards the 6,000 um, in the next year or two year and a half to two years, possibly. Um, the reason being is this is just like a estimate of um, kind of like the depth of this uh, pullback from all time highs in January 2022 to the lows in October 2022 uh, and a potential breakout uh, hopefully very soon so that depth of this pattern depth of this uh, you know uh, dip into October is about 37 about a thousand thirteen hundred points uh, if we break above uh, you know uh, last highs we were at 40 we would be at 4800 plus another 1300 we could easily be around 6000 slightly higher so it's a bullish uh, projection um, I don't know what do you guys think. Uh, I think it's reasonable projection, um, and um, again, I am long. I bought S and P 500. So let's look at Nasdaq. Here's QQQ. I own QQQ. Actually, I bought it in January of this year. Um, this was one of those. Uh, I just had a hunch. I thought we 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 basically bottomed out here in October. I bought basically near the near the lows. Uh, in January, I bought uh, Nasdaq at 280. It's currently at 386, so a very nice gain. Um, I mean, another opportunity to buy was right there back in April of this year. How do I know? I don't need to know. I don't need to think. I just need to look at the chart. See, that's why I'm so, you know, you guys should just get this indicators for TradingView.com. Uh, TradingView.com is free. All you need to do is just sign up on my site. So there's the breakout. That's all I need to know. Uh, occurred uh, for Nasdaq here in April, April fourth, um, and then we just moved higher. That's that's all there is to it. Actual alert, by the way, in April. So if you're sitting, you should be sitting in a very nice position at this point. So Nasdaq made a marginal new high. Um, the high from July nineteenth was was. Um, 387.42 the high from 15th of november was 387.75 so we made a very small uh, marginal new high it's a new 52 week high again in my mind it's a pretty obvious sign that we are in an uptrend uh, so we continue to hold nasdaq um xlk technology so i'm gonna go to weekly chart um, and i wrote here last week i actually covered this one i go uh, are things that bad if we are technology is hitting all-time highs or approaching all-time highs last week how bad can things be if technology is at all-time highs i mean how how bad what i mean yes we have bad situation worldwide we have you know china tension we have things are happening you know worldwide but that's the only thing we need to really look at is are we at least near the highs no we're actually at all-time records so i i don't see how bad things this is an all-time high do you see what I'm saying? We've never been here before. Um, and this is despite all of the bad news, bad, bad things happening in the world. So my thing is ignore the news. Uh, look at the indicators. Okay. This is XLK right here. Uh, all you need to do is just buy it back here in February, back in, in March. That's all there is to it. See, the, the close above the blue line. That's all you really need to know. So technology at all-time highs, I mean, you can't get any better than that. 
XLC, this is another, they separated the technology from uh, communication services. So communication services has um, things like uh, Meta, Alphabet, or Google, uh, you know, AT&T, Verizon, things of that nature. Also, 52 Akai, you know, this is, again, how bad are things if we're hitting 52 Akai? So we broke out above the July, uh, July highs, we're moving high, we're closed at new highs, you know, this is, this is good news. Um, yeah, we're a little bit, you know, still ways off from record highs, but still, I, I can't think of anything uh, better to have um, as a proof of concept, proof of the fact that we are in an uptrend. And for now, at least, let's just keep a, um, let's expect, or rather, let me rephrase it. Let's at least not, um, you know, worry about what might happen and just look at uh, the chart in front of us, trade the chart in front of us, and also be open to better than expected outcomes. Yes, once again, there's bad things happening, but we, we should remain open uh, mentally to better than expected outcomes. Uh, junk debt, high yield bonds. So high yield bonds and, um, and uh, stocks correlate highly. So this is a weekly chart of high yield bonds, JNK. Below here, what's called correlation coefficient. Now you said it's very much positive. Uh, most of the time, you know, junk debt and, and stocks are doing pretty much the same thing. Currently, junk debt and stocks are doing the same thing in 75% 70 of cases. So if stocks are going up, junk, junk, bond, uh, junk debt or high yield bonds are also going up. Um, this is a weekly chart. So yeah, you can do the same thing using my indicators uh, on the weekly chart. All you have to do is change the setting to 52. So daily chart used to 50, length with weekly use 52. So this is a weekly, each candlestick is a week's worth of activity. And daily chart junk debt made a new 52 week high just recently again. So this is second week in a row. No, it is uh, actually not second, not in a row, but this giant candle from October 30th, that's a 52 week high. And then this week again, 52 week high, and also we closed at 52 week high. So very good looking chart. So notice on this chart, this is JNK and down below here, it says ADJ or adjust. So if I unclick it, it's, it's completely different chart. The high yield bonds are by, you know, they are high yield for a reason. They, they yield a lot of uh, dividend or coupon. So what this calculation does is it adds the coupon or adds the dividend back into the um, price of the stock, or in this case, uh, ETF, GNK, uh, and thus uh, it sort of counts the entire return. So it's a total return, GNK total return. 52 week high for GNK is excellent news for uh, stocks um, because of the correlation uh, high degree of correlation between high yield bonds and stocks. We are expecting uh, this to continue. In fact, what I really like about the fact is that high yield bonds are already at 52 week highs, while the S&P is not yet. So in fact, this is a bullish divergence and we're expecting um, stocks to catch up. In other words, continue moving higher. So to summarize, uh, we should be expecting uh, positive things, um, even though there are things, or at least keep your mind open, keep your mind open to better than expected outcomes. Let's switch gears. Let's look at DXY dollar currency index. A few weeks ago, I put in this prediction. You can see it on this chart. Um, it's a line with circles on it. So I drew it in on Friday, the 20th of October, exactly during the, uh, one of my presentations. So I said that most likely we're going to be uh, doing something of this nature. So, um, number one, notice that uh, price has closed above this blue support resistance line on, uh, 26th of October. This means that dollar index, dollar is now in an uptrend. 
However, it came a long way. Notice this big rally uh, that started back in July and just never stopped really. Dollar really continued pretty strongly higher and now we're trading sideways to down. This is a normal consolidation. This is how things usually happen. There's an up move, then we have a normal sideways consolidation to down consolidation. Now, I'm, you know, we are kind of getting where I want uh, this uh, consolidation to end. Notice the projection uh, of the indicators was, uh, this is why I drew it in this particular uh, projection. Uh, there's a pullback and we're kind of getting to where ideally we should stop going down. Because if we continue down towards the red line, then we again are going to have uh, another, we might have a whipsaw, in other words, uh, a false breakout. Okay, so right now we're thinking that dollar is in an uptrend. And uh, this is important because we trade gold. So here's gold, XCU divided by USD. So lower part of this equation is now getting bigger in general. Uh, however, you know, relatively uh, recently it's been pulling back. So this bottom part of this equation for the last few sessions has been getting smaller and gold actually kind of took advantage of it and moved higher except for today okay so notice that today dollar actually dropped pretty significantly it dropped like half percentage point it's a definitely a red candle what happened to gold it's also a red candle and it's also a topping looking pattern topping looking candle okay so just look at this candlestick from today this is a it looks like a shooting star candlestick. I'm going to turn off the indicators for a second. It kind of looks like that, you know. We have a, a long tail at the top. Uh, body, the real body, the, the red part is near the bottom of the um, candle. And it, it just looks bearish to me. So it looks like there is resistance up here. Um, and so... Technically speaking, there was a signal to buy gold right there on um, 13th of November. However, I decided not to take this particular one and just to watch what's happening. So the way dollar has been acting, I mean, a few weeks been really pretty bad for dollar. Gold should have taken a pretty strong advantage of it, and it didn't. So that's what kind of gives me pause is that with a relatively weakening dollar why isn't gold taking advantage so let's see what happens and i wanted to show you silver so this is silver xag divided by usd so once again if this bottom part of this equation you know us dollar is now in an uptrend and will be expected to move higher the bottom part of this equation will get bigger you know heavier and will pull this currency pair lower okay as of right this instant, I think silver is in a downtrend. So a bearish uh, signal occurred right there on, um, let me see, this was uh, October 2nd, okay. So we, we have closed below this red line and this is a, a, a bearish signal, a downward uh, beginning of a downtrend, I think. Also notice the way it acted later on. Notice that we come, came up to the blue line and were rejected there on Friday the 20th of October. And again, we kind of came down to the red line, were rejected there and now came up to the blue line again. And so far for two days from 16th of November and today 17th of November, we're also rejected at the blue line. So uh, is this it or we will see a move higher uh, Monday? for or at a Sunday night for silver and gold. All eyes are really on the dollar. If dollar, um, you know, stops dropping and starts again moving higher, then gold will be in a world of pain. And so would be silver. Let's finally uh, wrap up today with oil. Uh, so oil fooled pretty much everybody and has... Um, you know, initially I saw a breakout right there, 31st of August, nice move higher, pull back, 
opportunity to buy, what I thought was an opportunity to buy, uh, but then it reversal. Okay, so basically we were all waiting for an escalation of the war in the Middle East uh, between here 31st of October and 8th of November. It never, never happened. So even right now I'm reading that Iran uh, was very surprised by uh, Hamas's attack on Israel and the ferocity of the attack as well. Um, and now Iran is actually distancing itself from Hamas. That's why I'm reading this right now. I'm not making this up. So it seems that um, the Strait of Hormuz, and I mentioned this before, Strait of Hormuz is... Uh, where the Iranian oil and um, many of the Gulf, Gulf um, uh, Persian Gulf countries uh, like Iraq and uh, Kuwait, a lot of oil passes through that uh, strait. And so if the war escalated, uh, Iran would be, you know, it would close the Strait of Hormuz, which would have affected oil shipments. And um, most likely if the Strait of Hormuz is closed, we would be looking at $150 oil, maybe even higher. But right now it's still running. And so when, when I see this, when I see a close below this red line for, uh, for oil, um, this, this means that we're, we're no longer going to be going up for oil. Uh, we actually might be retesting this lows uh, at $63. Who knows, maybe even lower. I mean... We need oil, but what if we need less oil? What if what if we have, I mean, every other car right now, I live in California here, every other car is an electric vehicle. So we're definitely moving in the right direction. So, you know, our world needs to be, we need to stop using, you know, fossil fuels um, for multiple reasons many of them are actually political because it adds to instability. Um, but even a uh, environmental factor is also a very good one to not use oil and in fact use renewable resources such as electric and, you know, for example, use um, uh, nuclear or uh, hopefully we'll eventually have uh, fusion power, etc. So solar and wind. Yeah, they all have their own problems, but I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a smart thing to do for multiple reasons, not the least of which is political. Uh, and, you know, wars, wars can break out and then all of a sudden we have no oil and the oil is at 150 and the economy collapses. Do we really want that? So this, this is good news, in my opinion. Um, yes, uh, if you were long oil, uh, then you need, I would close my position at this point if I was long oil. Um, but for, you know, look at the bright side. We didn't get World War Three. I think it's a good enough thing, right? What do you guys think? Make a comment. All right, head over to masterchestrading.com. Click on sign up, sign up for one of my products. So once again, uh, for this uh, interface, tradingview.com, it's a free interface. Tradingview.com is free. Just sign up on tradingview.com. Once you do, you have your account. Come over to masterchairstrading.com. Sign up for indicators or a newsletter or both trading indicators and newsletter. I think it's the best deal. So once you sign up, I will open the door for you. You send me your ID. I'll open the door for you um, so you can use my indicators on your chart. Even though it sounds daunting, it's not. It will take you literally five minutes. And I have training videos as well. So you have lots of training videos. Um, and you can ask me a question as well. Uh, just send me a message. Newsletter. Uh, I send out daily alerts about the various securities that we trade, such as ETFs, foreign ETFs, large cap stocks, as well as many speculative securities. You can just get that. But again, once again, uh, the best deal is to get both indicators and newsletters. That's it for this week's recap. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, share this video and make a comment. Or if you have any questions, ask a question in the comment section. Thank you for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.